And when I was there, I saw some green Rasporas. And these Geophagus are absolutely amazing. And I want them, but they're not for sale. What's we'll see, what kind of puffer is he? He's a Mabu puffer. Mabu puffer. Keep it nice and simple, but sort of variating. Sometimes my language skills are shocking, but I know what I'm trying to say. But here are the fish, guys. They're really cool, aren't they? What's going on guys and welcome back to the vlog. So I just want to say a big thank you first of all to each and every one of you for watching my videos. It just really feels good knowing that you're enjoying what I'm making. I mean, I started all this because it's fun, yeah? And I carry on doing it because it's fun, but it, it's an extra bonus knowing that you're enjoying it. So thank you for watching everyone. It's just going great. Hopefully we keep progressing as we are because I want to take this next level. And for that, we just need to keep growing. I mean, the pressure's on, but that's fine. I love that. And I'm just really looking forward to what's around the corner the next year, two years, who even knows? Enough about all that. I'm now stood next to my latest tank that I've set up, which is the Nuno filter one. So it's been set up a day now. All the fish are absolutely fine. We've got six chili Rasporas in here. I picked them because I just think they suit the style of tank very well. They're a tiny, tiny fish. It's a tiny tank. And there's lots of red and green in the tank, which like I think really complements the colors of the chili fish. Now what's interesting and a weird coincidence is till after I set this up, I went home and looked at my old studio and I found the original light that came with it two and a half years ago that I completely forgot I had. I thought it had gone, but turns out it hasn't. Now, the reason I like this light is it gives a really weird sort of purpley tone. I've not really, I think it's really high Kelvin, like 14,000 Kelvin or something. Anyway, I don't think it work on most skates, but for some reason, this little tank, it looks really good. It really makes the reds pop. And I remember that from when I originally set this tank up for the very first time, the reds that I put in there that I didn't realize required high light because I was so new to the hobby. It was Ludwigia Super Red, so what I've got in there now, but it, they stayed really red and they continued to grow. So that's why I put the light back on here. And I think it's gonna do really, really well with it. Click subscribe. Guess what guys, it's later in the day. Now I was just sat editing, I flipped the screen down because it covers most of the tank, but we got noodle action. Noodles, where are you gone noodle? Don't let me down, now you're calling me a liar. There he is, he's hiding, he's hiding. Noodle, come out. When I say noodle, of course, I am talking about a coolie loach. Ah, we've got another one, there we go. They're getting so much bigger than when I first got them. I'd say they're like almost double in size. So there's that one there, hello. Oh, I just banged the glass. I didn't realise I was that close. That scared him. And then there's that other one just in there somewhere. Just a minute ago, I'm not even kidding you, swimming everywhere. The second I pick, the, pick up the camera, it's always the way, isn't it? The second you do that, it will start hiding. Never mind. I'll keep it on standby whilst I continue editing. Oh, actually, whilst I'm here, I might as well... Sh sorry, move all of this. <laughs> Lights, camera. <laughs> so, yeah, the Endler Riparium has actually got new fish. I found some more babies over in the sort of main tank where these are from. Let me show you. Yeah, there were more babies in this tank. So I didn't even realize, to be honest, I was, it was when I was trimming some of this stuff back. Because look, it's been trimmed. Yeah, I was trimming it back and then I just saw a load of them and I was like, oh, more babies. So I scooped them out. There was about three. Um, maybe the ones that I missed from before when I moved it across. I don't really know, but all I do know is there's gonna be more and that's gonna be awesome. So what I think I'm gonna do is, is just keep them in here until they're big enough to go in other tanks and then just sort of move them about a bit. I might even put some in the Asian aquarium. A few of you have told me that they're not Asian now. It's my fault because I was watching Asian breeding programs and also the Singapore uh, end guppies. I don't really know. Who knows why I thought that? Either way, they'll look cool in there, won't they? I'm not gonna make a big thing of it or anything, but just like, as they grow, I can move them across. And eventually I wanna catch them and take them out because I wanna do a really cool racking system. I've got a nice area in the other studio where I wanna build some racking. Um, it, there's, it doesn't look like there is any room at the moment, but where I've got those three tanks in a room, why am I talking about it? Just show you. Where I've got these three at the moment, I think it's wasted space. I'm not really using anything underneath it. So what I wanna do is build a whole racking system of either eight of these tanks or six. I think six would be better actually. I'll go with six, because I can keep them spaced out nicely like this, but I can bring them up a bit higher and one down a little bit lower, because next door I've got the other tanks and that showed me that I can have them above and below each other with space and you know I'll still be able to do stuff to them all the time. So I'm not really doing anything with these two yet, but as you can see, they're a good height. This is the blower one and look, I'm, I'm not ducking down, I can touch it, but if I wanna just 
just on my knees and it's good height, good height, good gaps for maintenance. So it can be done absolutely fine. So I don't know if you guys remember, but not too long ago, I went to my local Maidenhead Aquatics, which is like a fish chain store, if you like, in the UK. Anyway, the particular one near me is absolutely amazing. I love the shop. And when I was there, I saw some green Resporas. Oh my goodness, I've wanted these for such a long time. These are the neon green Resporas. They look so good, don't they? I mean, this lighting probably takes some of the green away because it's quite blue. But in, in my tanks with the 6,500 Kelvin, that'd be really, really green. Oh, I've got to get some of those for sure. Now, I haven't seen them for a very long time and I've wanted them for a very long time. I can't stop thinking about them though, so I'm going to have to go back and get them. So I've currently got a load of tanks set up on my racking system here that can house them in the meantime, whilst we build a really, really cool tank for them. But I want to get them because I'm pretty sure they're such a popular fish that they're going to go in no time. And when I go back to the shop, they just won't be there. I've just called them up. They said they still got some there. So let's go get them. Okay, so here we are again. Look, this is so cool. When you come in, you greet with these, and these geophagus are absolutely amazing, and I want them, but they're not for sale. Matt, are they for sale? <laughs> no, they're my babies. They're my pets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. But they look really good in my home aquarium. My home aquarium's probably a bit too small for these size ones anyway, so, um, but oh, they're so nice. Colors on them, is, they're just insane. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. We've come to get the green neon rasporas. Hopefully, they're still here. I mean, I did call ahead, so you'd hope they are. <laughs> ah, yes, here they are, guys. Looking so good. So like I said before, the lighting in here is, uh, it's like a middle ground. It's kind of in the middle for everything. But these fish will look so good under my lighting as well. How many should we get? I reckon we should get like 15, 10 or 15. I think that'd be a really good number. I'm gonna be putting them in like a 60 centimeter tank. So I think that'll work well. Right, we are here. This is Matt, by the way, store hey, manager. He, we're going to feed Buster. Buster's the, uh, what's he, what kind of puffer is he? He's a Mabu puffer. Mabu puffer. There we go. He's, he's getting fed. And he's missed it. <laughs> you going to see it? <laughs> you know something's going on. <laughs> there we go. He's getting it from the bottom. Look at his tail. I love his tail. And literally two seconds ago, he was up the top here, just splashing everywhere. <laughs> Some more food going in. So how long have you had him? Uh, he's three years old in the shop now. Three years old. He's so cool. I mean, I'd love to. I really, I really would, but my, <laughs> my tanks at the moment are nowhere near big enough. It's a big tank. How big is this tank, Matt? Uh, eight foot long, five foot front to back. Wow, that's, uh, that's big. <laughs> Yeah, so you can see from the top there like, how far back it goes. This is cool as well, the plants on the top. I love that. Like, there's a little waterfall system which will give some agitation to the top of the water as well, stop any sort of film building up. And look, we've got these silver dollars, are they? Yeah, silver, silver dollars. Silver dollars, amazing, amazing stingrays as well. Again, all of them I'd love to have. One day, maybe in the next studio when we've got more space, I'll get a massive tank and do all of this stuff for sure. So I'm back, we've got our fish. I need to temperature acclimate them quickly, get them in the net, and then I can just put them in one of the storage tanks that you can see behind me. The setup I've got in mind for them is not quite ready yet. Well, it, I've got the setup, I just don't have all the stuff to go in it. I'm just waiting for it to arrive. But I wanted to get the fish before they obviously sold out and just know that I've got them ready to go, ready for when I do the build video. So I've had the fish temperature acclimating now for 30 minutes. So that means we can take them out and put them in their new tank. Right, I don't want to spoil this at all, so we're going to come back in a bit and see the colours because at the moment they're just washed out. So whilst I was at the shop, I also got 10 Amano shrimp. They're actually 
there. <laughs> uh, they're going to be going in the Buddha Aquarium, which I've not started yet, and, and a lot of you are going to be annoyed. <laughs> so I built the aquarium, well, last week sometime now. I'm still waiting for some stuff to arrive. It's the sort of thing I need to just wait until it's here. I can't make a start until it is. It's basically really important plants that are just going to make the scape, and without them, it's, it's, it's not going to be perfect. Why, why start until we got everything ready? But yeah, that's why I've got those Amanos in there already. Sort of, I want to put them in that tank as well. There's nothing else in there, so they have their own tank. I'll catch them easy then and move them across into this tank when they're ready. Amanos can sometimes be hard to find at the moment because of shipping and Corona and everything like that. So I, I just saw them there. I thought I'd better get them so that they're ready to go. But yeah, there's some big, big plans for this scape. I can't wait to actually get started. But like I say, I want it to be perfect. So it's, it's best to be patient. Trust me, um, it's harder for me to be patient than anyone. <laughs> so there we are look the Amanos are in believe it or not there's actually about 10 in there but you know they, they're quite good at hiding Amanos well not so much now actually thinking about it they're all there oh there's one right in front of us yeah so that's pretty cool we've got 10 of those they'll be nice and easy to catch out of this little tank I mean none of this is planted it's all loose in there so I can just move it around as and when I need to but yeah, they'll do good in there for a while. Not a bad little tank for ten amano shrimp. So the green spores have now been in the tank for 24 hours. They're looking fantastic already. Let me show you. Right here, right here they are, guys. I'm sorry if it's a little bit cloudy, the water, but I've just removed an absolute ton of the salvinia and uh, Amazon frog bit. The whole surface was just completely covered and you couldn't even see it into the tank. It was just completely pitch black. So yeah, that's what that's that's why there might be some dust in. Hopefully you're not picking it up, but I can see it. But here are the fish, guys. They're really cool, aren't they? I mean, it's so rare. You don't often see this, do you? You don't often see this bright green colour. I, I wonder why more fish aren't like this. In fact, I'm going to look up some information on these and try and see what their natural environment is. Because at some point, I want to try and replicate something really cool and similar to their natural environment. And I don't even know what that is. So as far as I can tell so far, we're talking Southeast Asian streams. I mean, these are some of my favorite environments to look at, along with Amazon and, well, all of them really. <laughs> but from the research I'm looking at, I'm seeing a lot of crypts in the water. I'm seeing a tint to the water with some, you know, greens in the, in the background. That's what I'm envisaging. I really struggle with that one envisaging anyway <laughs> got it so i'm thinking of doing a black water with some really green plants and some river style rocks separating the the difference between the two zones so i want like tall plants at the back short plants in the foreground keep it nice and simple but sort of variating sometimes my language skills are shocking but i know what i'm trying to say let's think like a sandy foreground with a nice sort of gravelly detail with some crypts in it a boulder style sort of separation between the background and there's a nice tall i don't know polysperma or something like that is polysperma is polysperma asian i think it is let me check that yeah, apparently it's native to China, Bangladesh, Malaysia, and it's been introduced to the US as well now. So it's everywhere. So we can use that, which is cool because it's a very easy to grow plant. It grows quite quick, tall, and it's always very green. It does require decent levels of light though, otherwise you start to get sort of pinholes in your leaves. So yeah, that's something cool to look forward to. Right, Amazon tank update, guys. Everything's doing great. This tank is maturing so, so well. I'm so pleased with it. Look at this in the foreground now. We're getting loads and loads of growth. That is dwarf sag, and it just sends out these runners underneath. And even in that fine little layer of gravel, look, you can get this plant growing really well. And this kind of exposed area shows you how it works. So there's like a, like a runner that shoots into there, and then another one shoots out, and another one shoots out. So they're all connected. These That one's not connected to that one, but these two possibly are. I don't know. It's just sending out runner after runner. In fact, I think they're all from separate plants. Yeah, they are. And then look at this shoot here. This one's sending out another one to try and find, if you like, some more sand to go in. So that's cool. But how nice does that look? The fish are expecting some feeding now. So they really have got good at knowing when it's feeding time now. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy isn't it right look, look they're like he's tapped there's no food why is there no food if he's tapping okay i better get the food go 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 fish oh the colombians the colombians are so cool aren't they just the coloration as well on the colombians it's so nice isn't it it's those vibrant sort of reds in the in the uh, rear fins and then the dorsal fin's got this really cool orange look to it i'll try and get some slowed up close-ups for you because they're going a little bit crazy right now <laughs> the Corey's at the bottom like hang on hang on where's our food it's making its way down guys but let's feed them as well okay sinking pellet going in whoa 
way too much again. Look, all the other fish are trying to have a go. The Columbians will probably be able to pick those off because they'll be big enough, but enough has gone in there to fall down to the bottom. So it'll be fine. Oh, I've just managed to get it all over that log, haven't I? <laughs> There we go, look, now the Corys are going nuts. Now it's their feeding time. You all happy now? You look to be happy. They're all coming out. There's the panda, look, panda Cory in the middle there, and then the black Venezuelans. And then at the back there, you can see the bristle nose as well. Oh, we've got another panda, sort of just hiding away over here. And what appears to be just a stray piece of pearl weed, even though I haven't planted that in this tank. Get out. So when I first set up this tank, there was a little bit of a fear that the silver tip tetras might cause some aggression issues. Some people had reported it before when there's a mix of male and females, that sort of thing, too many males. I mean, that can be standard stuff when you get tetras together, not just, not your cute little neons, but like more of the vicious kinds. Remember, piranhas are a type of tetra as well. But I'm pleased to say that there's been no aggression that I've seen at all no fish losses at all and I think that's because of the stocking levels and just the pure amount of fish in there I think it's allowing any sort of aggression to disperse so much going on all the time you've got to look left you've got to look right you know you, you, the fish are constantly being distracted I guess by especially bigger fish so the Colombians I think are really helping in that I think the Colombians are still being seen as a bit of a threat in the tank not enough to cause sort of you know distress but all the other fish are very wary of where the Colombians are at all times I'm so glad I went for them and they're gonna get a little bit bigger as well, which would be really cool. Actually, most of the fish in here will get a bit bigger than they are at the moment. They're all sort of like teenagers, if you like. But I tell you what, next week, I'm going to get a very special fish for this tank. I've wanted this fish for a very long time. The fish I'm getting can get pretty big, but I've been told it takes a long time for that to happen and um, I can do something about that at a later date. I'll give you a clue, it's gold. Leave a comment below if you can guess the next fish that's going in the Amazon tank. that is the end of the vlog guys if you haven't already click the like click the subscribe button and i will see you on the next one